Welcome to Study Buddy, meditation philosophy for the heart of your practice. This is a live online discussion of ancient yogic texts amongst meditation practitioners in the Shambhavananda yoga tradition. My name is Acharya Satyam, the resident teacher at Konalani Yoga Ashram in Hawaii, and I welcome you with love and respect. Aloha everyone. Thanks for being here. Really excited about tonight's class, um, mostly because I'm really excited to meditate together. I'm seeing our work in philosophy as as really um, a conduit, you know, for our meditation practice. Uh, and so I'm really excited to really put the the philosophy to work for us tonight and um, to dive in, you know, really dive into our practice together. And I hope I can be a vehicle and, and sort of help you dive deeper into your practice. If we flash back a little bit, this sutra 3.31, Stiti Lyao, uh, was an expansion of the previous sutra. Our work in both of these sutras was to start to recognize our reality as Shiva. 3.30 told us to recognize really the, the, the physical actions of our day as Shiva. This sutra goes further to say, go beyond the physical actions and start to see Shiva even in the mind and in the knowledge that you have, and even in the void. And so it's extending this um, same concept to all the subtleties of our daily life, but also our practice. So let's um, jump into the text and then sort of pull it apart together and hang out. Um, Anju, are you in a position to read off the screen? Thanks for your presentation last week. Shout out to Dharma too. Thanks. Um, initially, this universe is revealed to you by the energy of action. And after this universe shines before you, the knowledge of the universe remains for some time as an impression in your objective consciousness. That is what is meant by the word shtiti. Then the impression of the universe is your objective consciousness. Oh, sorry. Then the impression of this universe is your objective consciousness also melts away, and all that is left is the void state where there is nothing. That is what is meant by the word laya. And this state where there is nothing is also held in consciousness. All right, I'm going to pause you there. So we've got two states described to us. One, uh, both are beyond action. Both are beyond the physical. Um, one, the first half is described as knowledge, right? And that is known as stiti. And that the next one is described as a void state, almost absent of what we might recognize on a physical level. Yet it is Shiva and is known as laya. And then, um, Andrew, you can just finish this up. For such an elevated soul, these two states are the only expansion of their energies and nothing else. For them, the subjective world may be created in their sensual world, or it may be stored in their impressions, or it may be taken away from their impressions. But this threefold world is nothing more than the expansion of their God consciousness everywhere. Thanks, Anju. And also, thank you for the sort of like uh, translating that into the, you know, the more inclusive pronoun. Um, Appreciate it, and as everyone knows, please always do that when when you're available when it's available to you. So for the elevated soul, going beyond the physical is expected. That we learn to recognize the states of our mind, and even these states that are beyond the mind and beyond the physical, all as extensions of Shiva, and we start to use our practice there. Um, I will say it's really cool that Kailasi came is here at this class because the predominant metaphor I think that we can use to understand this is that of pottery. Um, we've all heard Babaji say that after 10,000 pots, you sort of know what you're doing, right? He went to that pottery workshop. Everybody had all these intricate questions and the teacher just kept saying what? Throw more pots, meaning you just got to You got to have experience. And so in this sutra, we see that concept portrayed in a more ancient way. Uh, initially, in any profession, 
you're sort of working with the physical level. If you're a potter, you're throwing, you're just trying to center those first pots. If you're a cook, you're just trying to cook the recipe by what's on the physical page. You throw a thousand pots, you cook a thousand recipes, you accumulate something beyond the physical. In the text, we're calling it this knowledge, right? And so you, you actually start to work from those stored impressions. You actually, your hands might be centering this pot, but it's actually a thousand hands centering a thousand pots or a thousand knives uh, cutting a thousand carrots in that moment. And so your, your capacity is informed beyond just the physical. And then eventually, after 10,000 pots or 10,000 carrots or 10,000 mantras or malas, of course, this is where we're going with it all, um, you become the activity. You, it is so infused within you that you are a chef, even when you're not in a kitchen, right? You're a potter, even when you're not at a wheel, it is you. And so that's that void state where the physical has been dropped, but there's still without a doubt, the experience is very much in there. And so for example, with a mantra, this would be that point when the mantra is, as Babaji says, doing you, right? where the mantra has its own sort of vibration and power and it's just sort of happening. And so the void doesn't mean empty in the sense that we're used to thinking of it. The void actually means incredibly full, just empty of the physical. I had a chance to ask Babaji about this. I said, when you're working at the heart level, what's your energy like there? What's the effort like? Is it even effort like we know it? And he was pretty clear to say it was, it was hardly the kind of effort we know at all in that he said it's a very full space, yet it's very empty. And then he laughed. And then that was the end of the conversation. He was like, full yet empty. Ha, ha, ha. And then he's like, what else you got? So, so I want to jump in and obviously explore this in our practice. We know this is a part of our practice. We've heard and read the text from Swami Muktananda that very clearly states that you can do mantra at the mouth, the Vaikari level. You can do mantra at the throat and that this is a deeper experience of the mantra. This isn't the Madhyama level, or you can, or eventually you can do mantra at the heart, the Pashyanti level. And he says of that Pashyanti level, here we go. Here words are hidden and what arises is matrika. So the vibration is very full, but the physical words are hidden. And I realize I have this, this really fancy notepad on the screen here that I didn't use at all. So <laughs> still getting used to that. So let's do a little practice together, and then we'll take a moment to reflect, write, and discuss after that. All right, so we're going to do some mantra. Let me get the, feel free to adjust your seat, of course. And we'll dive into this for about, we'll do probably three or four minutes of mantra and then we'll work three or four minutes silently. Which mm -hmm. mantra? Om Namah Shivaya, happy Shivaratri. So we'll do Om Namah Shivaya. And I can get the mantra and I'm ready if that would help. Sure. Take a moment, make sure you're comfortable. I don't see it, so we might just do it without it. Oh, here we go. Got it. Here we go. <coughs> Vibration in the mouth. Om Namah Shivaya. 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 
ten more at the level of the mouth. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. 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 Good and swallow. Let that pull your attention down to the base of the throat. Intone the OM sound and let your awareness feel that vibration at the base of the throat. So this next level of mantra represents a thousand mantras later, 10,000, 100,000 really, you know. And so relax and allow the depth of your practice to bring you to this next level. You can't force it. You can only allow. And so just let your attention relax. Let it sink down naturally to this space of the throat. We'll go a little bit slower, a little bit quieter with our mantra. Okay. Relaxing to the throat. Om Namah Shivaya. 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 Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. One more set. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. Start to feel your heart. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. 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 And now we move towards the heart with our breath and our mantra. Physically, the words are hidden. They're not even spoken. but we absolutely know they're there. So try to feel the words, not as a physical mantra that you're saying in your head, but as something different that you are capable of perceiving.
repeating it with your breath. Allow the mantra to be something different than the physical, yet full of awareness. As Muktananda teaches, repeat the mantra as if it were your own name. After 10,000 meals, a cook becomes a chef, a chef that can exist outside of a kitchen. After just as many mantras, a yogi becomes something similar. You feel the connection to your mantra in a deeper place. It doesn't require any external baggage or indicators. It's completely your own, infused with your heart. That part of you that only you know about, that's where the mantra is vibrating. Repeat the mantra with even less effort mentally than you are now, yet remain aware of it. Experiment with less and less physical effort, even at the mental level.
use the same amount of effort you would use if you were listening to music. We've got to try working in subtler ways, experimenting, allowing ourselves to relax and feel from the inside out. Do you allow your eyes to open and keep the gaze soft? You don't have to look at the screen. Stay relaxed. And just see if that mantra, if your mantra, can, can be with you. We, we work so hard to bring it with us. And those, that effort is noble. But if you've done enough mantras, it's time to almost bring it with you like a, without the leash. Relax your mind and Think less. You don't have to combat the thoughts as much. And so allow yourself to maintain this, this inner discipline as we move into a little bit of free writing on this topic. I totally understand if you don't want to come out of the state, you don't have to respect that. You're a practitioner. But it also could show you another side of your work if you tried to actually write or externalize while meaning internal. So it is a part of our tradition. So we'll, we'll do that now and just give yourself some time to um, 
make that connection from the heart to the hand, picturing that thread going from the heart down the arm to the fingertips. And even though you're writing different words than your mantra, why can't you still be doing mantra? It's an interesting question. And so just talk about your path from the physical to the non-physical, how you get there. Um, we'll take about two and a half minutes for this. Just let yourself enjoy the process. Just about a minute left. Allowing your thoughts to conclude. After that last little period, taking a breath, getting a little separation from your writing. And then rereading it underlining what sticks out to you, what really, where you really connected. As you underline a phrase or a keyword, uh, you can type that in the chat box. Flow of awareness. Stillness. Settle in and expand. Relaxing and melting. Ex expand. Listen to what's already there. Effortless. The path is relaxation. Focus. Soften, expand, membrane containing me dissolves. Dissolving. Gradual surrender. Rings. Focus. Stepping stones. Voice of art. Merging creative flow. 
a shift occurs. Wow, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> really, it just felt significant. Even reading those words yeah. like helped all of those things happen for me. So yeah. thank you. <laughs> really felt each one of those. Um, I always like to leave the floor open if anyone's excited to share or elaborate on their keyword. And I'm also happy to call on someone, but uh, I'll leave the floor open for a moment until I pick on someone. <laughs> Hey, El Dorado, do either of you want to share? You can rock, paper, scissors. But <laughs> I don't know if we have time. Yeah, I, I wrote stepping stones um, because at first I was, I was feeling like just lately the, the physical saying, the mantra, doesn't really do much for me. Um, but then realizing that it is part of the process and it makes way for an easier path to the more subtle experience of the, the throat or the heart. So the physical repetition actually sort of propelled you towards a more subtle space? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like it was part of the work to get there. Like, you can't just leave it out and go yeah. straight to the soul. I see. Sort of like you get, you have a little bit of resistance, uh, you know, with the physical. If you've done enough mantra and you practice enough, you think, like, just go to the mantra with the breath at the heart, like, and it felt, it feels a little bit rote, but then you realize, oh, I can. I could use this more effectively. It's almost like how even the pros, like baseball players, they just warm up, just catch and throw, catch and throw, you know, you know, knees, knees up, butt kickers, you know, just like the basics and how it really sets you up for the, the bigger work afterwards. Yeah. Hopefully that, yeah, you're nodding. So I think I interpreted that well. Cool. I did see some nods while Jatila was talking. Whoever would like to, you're welcome to elaborate, you know, if you're feeling that, or the floor is open for your own direction. I thought that um, <clears throat> it was really nice to start. I was so external when I first sat down and to start with and the, the mouth and then go to the throat. And then go to the heart tonight was just the perfect antidote to an external day. <laughs> and um, I didn't write anything down because I was just so happy in my heart, but um, my word would have been awe. <laughs> it was really nice. I don't know, if you guys, every class I'm taking through this SGRY site is just so perfect every time. <laughs> like, Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks to the Sangha for making it possible. And for, of course, for the, for Baba and the teachings. I mean, yeah. Um, I don't mean to put you on the spot, Kailasi, but I was excited about your description that um, expanding beyond the membrane um, did that, did you have some sort of, some work happen for you in that space? Did it feel like it was working? Let's see. The quick unmute is just pressing space bar while you talk. You have to hold it. You have to hold it. But either way, it's a, oh, there you go. So what, what, what is your question that, that, if you'd like to elaborate on your um, experience, it seemed like pretty fruitful. Or how you got there. Well, just um, when you're in the heart, um, then the boundaries of the physical and the sense of self dissolves as you soften and expand beyond, and beyond that. So I just felt it kind of as my energy was expanding, I felt the limitation of myself. <laughs> it was just a membrane. 
you know, like we think it's so, so big and so, you know, so real and it's just, uh, it's what it is, you know, but when you uh, relax into the other place, you know, your perspective changes. So it just felt like um, a membrane. It's just came to mind. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just sort of feeling with that. It seems like that membrane, it's, we sort of approach it almost like it's like a shell, but it's such a sort of more fluid experience. And it really is like, it's, it's not to be fought with. You can, it sounds like you're saying you can really just, you can expand through it naturally without this sense of, I have to break through this thing, or this is an obstacle to me, but rather like you can work through it uh, with a more, uh, almost like, like literally through it, almost like you can work through it instead of having to break it. It's when you said the word relax, that that's where it took me. Well, it's like, what, what is it? I'm having a senior moment here, but the, you know, remember the whole thing of the self with the light bulbs and then the different bodies, I forget what you call them, are like, are like lampshades around that and stuff. So, you know, when you connect to, you know, an energetic, more of an energetic source or pulse, it's like, you know, it radiates through the dimension, the, the more physical dimensions. And so it's just, uh, Mm -hmm. it's just like almost like getting a sense of maybe like a veil or like a yeah it's not I wasn't really feeling it like the effort I was just feeling it that this other perspective of me the small me yeah thank you and the big me shines through Thank you so much. I saw the word relax on a number of people's keywords. Um, so I'm going to just sort of like steer the ship a little bit with the, with the flow of the class. And I'm feeling like it would be really fun to do a little bit of movement. And then we're going to come back. And then we're going to meditate again together on this work, on this topic. So does that sound okay to everybody? It'd be funny if one person is like, no. Um, so go ahead and uh, Abai, you can okay. take it from here. Um, so you're welcome to stay seated. Kind of like Jatila was sharing with the mantra out loud, there can be that resistance to like getting back in the body after diving inside. Um, so it's okay if you want to keep it simple. I will also invite you to stay connected actually do a couple of silent mantras at the heart and then be courageous and stay connected as you come to standing. Can you do it? Is anyone going to do it? We'll see. I see some people doing it. Whether you're seated or standing, both are perfect. Come back to the mantra and gently Begin to sway by pushing into one foot a little bit more and then the other foot. And this should work if you're seated as well. If you're cross-legged, you might push down into your knee instead. And just like we've all been sharing this feeling of relaxing and dissolving and surrendering, try to release any grip on the body and just allow the gentle pressure from foot to foot to direct the whole body. Keep repeating your mantra and slow down your movement. See if that can help you become a little bit more present in the space from sole of foot to crown of head. And the next time you start to press into the right foot, let your body gently start to turn to the left. Let the left arm reach really gentle. You don't want to feel this in any one joint. And then start to push into the other foot. Let the opposite arm start to reach up. Make sure you're still breathing and connecting to the mantra. And continue with this foot-to-foot -foot action, letting the movement emanate all the way up through the heart to the opposite shoulder and arm. And if you're feeling it in the shoulder, move a lot less. 
It's almost like your body is an inflatable raft filling evenly and fully. Be a little looser with the arms. Maybe the hands get a little droopy like the branches of a weeping willow. Keep repeating the mantra. And then allow the movement to start to get smaller and smaller, subtler and subtler, just like the pathway that we walked with the mantra from mouth to throat to heart. Eventually landing back at center, but maybe feeling more in the inner space as you continue to repeat your mantra. I'm using that same softness and surrender in your movement. Start to melt your way back into your seat if you've come to standing and try to feel the pathway there as you move. It's not about getting to the seat, but rather enjoying the softening of the body, the support that your seat provides, that balance between effort and ease. And then eventually come into stillness, continuing to repeat the mantra at the heart. And just notice if your journey has changed anything about how the seat is feeling or how you're experiencing it. And we can move into the second half. Yeah. And so we'll go right into some more mantra practice and we'll move from there. This time we're going to start, go ahead and start down at the throat at that slower pace. And then we'll see about the heart, if we're going to do it out loud or not, depending on sort of how it's feeling. <clears throat> for a moment you can keep the harmonium going so we're going to slow it down a little bit more and go a little bit quieter and you can shift down to the heart and experiment here with how little effort you can project your mantra while still saying it Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Shivaya, Namah Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. Ten more, even less physical effort. Let it be so easy. Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om 
Let the mantra be as effortless as your breathing. Imagine you're waiting for an elevator. You press the button. You know it's coming, but you can't speed it up. You're not going to leave. You're here. And so let yourself be totally present. Let the elevator come to you. Experiment with being in the place you want to be, being in the heart, and letting the other layers dissolve. This is your practice. Practice like it means something to you. It's your heart, it's your mantra. You have to repeat it like you repeat it. So let it come from the heart. There's a lot of things you can do while you wait for an elevator. One of them is to be so patient. It's a slight smile. Breathe in. And be completely present.
You can even imagine you're in that elevator. And then it's going down towards the heart on its own. And as you relax and maintain presence, it moves, it descends. You can feel the energy flowing even as you're sitting still. You're not a rock. This energy is still flowing. If you can relax, it'll take you inside. Namaste, everyone. Jai Jai 